Hey everyone, I'm Babu Khandalwal and I welcome you all to our Simply Learns YouTube channel. Today, we'll be going over the sorting algorithms in C Sharp. But first, let me remind you that we have our daily updates on numerous technologies. So if you are a tech geek looking for the latest technological innovations, then try subscribing to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you never miss an update on Simply Learn. So now, without any further ado, Let's get started with the agenda for today's session. We will begin our session with a discussion on what is sorting. Then we will briefly discuss some of the basic sorting methods, which includes using a sort function or a compare to method or using a delegates. We will also try sorting using link library functions and an iterative sorting method. Finally, we will discuss some sorting algorithms like bubble sort, insertion sort, selection sort, and quick sort with the help of our demo. So, let's get started with a discussion on what is sorting. First up, sorting is the technique of putting the items of a collection in a certain order in C sharp. An array, a list, or any other data set can be considered a collection. Next, the collection may contain items of both simple and complex kind. A simple type can be an array of integers, it can be a text, floating point values, and so on. Whereas a complex type might be a collection of objects of user defined kinds like employee, student, and so on. Complex types are frequently nested, which means that the objects may have several characteristics. At last, we have a C sharp sort function includes built in methods for sorting collection. C sharp sort function may sort an array, list, or any generic collection depending on the comparer given. Next, let's go over some of the basic sorting methods. We'll go over various sorting methods. So, first up, we have sort method. Let's go to our Visual Studio and try it out. Let's start with declaring and initializing an array. So int, we will have bracket arr equals to new int box. We will have normal box. Then we will have curly braces and we will give it the values so let's have 16 comma 29 comma 6 comma 17 comma 35 comma 19 now let's try to print this unsorted error first so console dot right line so unsorted array then after that we will have a for each loop with int item in ARR here we will have another console statement console dot write <coughs> we will have this item plus and have so these values separated by a space now let's call our sort function so we will call array 
dot sort in argument we will have arr which is our array semicolon to close it <coughs> now let's print this array so console dot right line <coughs> slash and slash and then we have sorted array then we will have a for each loop int item in ARR and we will have a console dot write item plus now let's save it and run it As you can see, it is first printing our sorted array, unsorted array. Then it has sorted this complete array using the sort function. Let's get back to our slides. Next up, we have a compare to method. So let's get back to our Visual Studio and try this one as well. Here we will have repeat we will start with declaring an array so int arr equals to new int braces then in curly braces we will have our array so 29 comma 6 comma 17 comma 35 comma 19 i'm using the same data set so that we we will have a clear understanding on how things are working so next let's print the array first so console dot right line unsorted array then we will have a for each then we will have int item in ARR And we will have console dot write item plus to separate them with a space. Now let's use the compare to method. So we will sort this array from first to last. We will compare every element to each other. So we will have array dot sort. Then we will have int. So arr comma new. comparison int
then in braces i will have i1 comma i2 equals to i1 dot compare to i2 then we will try to print this so console dot right line sorted array then we will have for each int item in arr and we will have console dot write then item plus and we will save this let's try this out as you can see it has first printed our unsorted array then it has sorted it out that's how you can work around with a compare to function now let's get back to our slides and check out what we have to learn next Next up, we have using a delegates method. So let's get back to our Visual Studio code and learn how to use delegates to, to do a sorting. Here, let's start by initializing an array. So we will have int braces arr equals to new int braces sixteen comma twenty nine comma six comma seventeen comma thirty five comma nineteen our data set then we will print out this unsorted array console dot right line then unsorted array then after that we have our for each loop and item in ARR Then we will have console dot write here we will have item plus then a space to separate them. Next we will start our sorting process. So we will sort this array from first to last. So to do that, we will use array dot sort and we will use int. Then we will have arr comma delegate. int m comma int n
then in curly braces we will have return m minus n next we will print out a result so console dot write line sorted array then we will have our for each and item ARR console dot write item plus a space to separate them now let's save it and run it as you can see it is printing a sorted array unsorted array within sorted array now Let's get back to our sites and check out what are other methods that we will be learning next. Next up, we have using link methods. So now, let's get back to our Visual Studio and learn that. Here, we will start with initializing and declaring a new array. So in braces. ARR equals to new int braces then curly braces in curly braces I will have 16 comma 29 comma 6 comma 17 comma 35 comma 19 next we will print out this unsorted array so console dot right line unsorted array then we have a for each loop int item in ARR we have console dot write then we have item plus a space now we will do our sorting process so To sort the array in increasing order, we will use ARR equals to ARR dot and order by function which is stored in our link system libraries. So C is equals to C dot to array next up we will print out the sorted array i will i'm just gonna use reuse this code and just change a few things let's save it and run it As you can see, it has printed out our unsorted and sorted array. Now, let's get back to our slides and learn our last method. Next up, 
we have using an iterative method. So to let's get started, let's go back to our Visual Studio code. So now we will start with creating an array. So int arr then braces equals to new int braces then curly braces we will have our set 6 17 35 19 next up we will also declare a variable temp so it's an integer variable now we will try to print the unsorted array so we have console dot right line unsorted array then we have our for each loop int item in arr then i have console dot write item plus a space now let's try to sort this array so we will traverse 0 to array's length so we will start with a for loop int i is equals to 0 i less than arr dot length minus 1 and i plus plus then we will traverse from i plus 1 to array's length so for loop let's give it the tab so that it will be easy to understand int j is equals to i plus 1 then j less than arr dot length then j plus plus now we will compare array elements with all next elements so if arr bracket i is greater than arr bracket j then we will have a swap so temp is equals to arr i so basically we are saving the value of arr i in temp then we will change the arr wise i's value with arr j Now we will store the temp value in ARRJ to complete the swapping process equals to temp. Now let's print out the sorted array. So we will use the earlier code. We will just rename this sort array control save. Let's try out this code now. And here, as you can see, we have successfully printed out our unsorted and sorted arrays. Let's get back to our slides. So now 
that we have looked over some of the basic sorting methods, it's time for a little quiz. So comment down below the answer, which sorting algorithm is used in the sort function which we just used. So now let's move on and let's check out some of the sorting algorithm. We will have a look at the algorithms like bubble sort, insertion sort, selection sort, and the quick sort. So let's discuss them one by one. First up, we have bubble sort. So we will start with the first two elements and compare them. And if the first one is bigger than the second, then we will switch them. So as you can see in this image, we have 4 and 2. So we will check if 4 is greater than 2. If it is, then we will switch them. So the next array will become 2, 4, 1, 8, 3. Then we will move on to the next pair. And we will repeat this with the next set. So now the array was 2, 4, 1, 8, 3. So we will check between 4 and 1. And if 1 is less than 4, then we will switch them. So new array will become 2, 1, 4, 8, 3. Now we will not go back to 2 and 1. We will come continue on to the next pair. So next pair will be 4 and 8. If we will see if these are the correct pair, yes it is. Then we will move on to the next one and we will switch between 8 and 3. In 8 and 3, the 3 is smaller, so we will switch them. So new array will become 2, 1, 4, 3, 8. So let's get to our next slide. And here, as you can see, our new array is 2, 1, 4, 3, 8. So now we will repeat the same step in the second iteration. So we will start with 2 and 1. So we will switch them. So it will be 1, 2, 4, 3, 8. Then we will have 2 and 4. We don't have any swap between them. So we will go to the next pair. We have swap between 4 and 3. So we will swap them. So it will become 1, 2, 3, 4, and 8. Then we have to go to our next pair. It is 4 and 8. There is no swap between them. So let's go to the next slide. And here the, all the swaps are done. So now this array is sorted. But we know that. But our algorithm doesn't know that yet. So we will go to a final iteration with this array. So it will check between 1 and 2. There is no swap. It will go to 2 and 3. There is no swap. 3 and 4. No swap. 4 and 8. No swap. So now when the algorithm registered that in the complete iteration there were no swaps then it will declare this array as sorted. Let's try this in a visual code studio. Here's our code for the bubble sort. So first let's go to our bubble sort function. Here I'm declaring an n with an array length. Then for the let's start from the start. In a bubble sort we have argument as array. So we have already passed down array in this function. So first we are declaring its length in a variable n. Then we will have a, a nested for loop which will run from i is equals to 0 to n minus 1 and j is equals to 0 to n minus i minus 1. Then we will have a if statement which will check arj is greater than arj plus 1. That is it is basically checking if the this uh, the first element is greater than the second element or not if it is then it will swap them it is utilizing a variable called temp to swap these two then we have another function which is a print array it is basically responsible to printing out the array next we have our mean function in this we are declaring an array 42183 this is the same data set uh, which we used during our logic explanation. So now, first we are printing out unsorted array just for the aesthetics. Then we are utilizing the print array function to print out this unsorted array. Then we are using our bubble sort function which is responsible for sorting this. Then we will print out sorted array to print out the actual answer. 
let's add another n so that I don't think it's needed because we will be using here right line. Then we have print array to print out the sorted array. Let's run it. As you can see, it has first printed out the unsorted array, which was our use case. Then we have our new sorted array digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 8. So now let's get back to our slides. Next up, we have insertion sort. So in insertion sort, let's say we have this array. We have an array called 65423. We will start with traversing this array from index i to n minus 1, that is i to 5 minus 1, that is 4. So while traversing, we will compare the elements in the current index to its predecessor. So we will be comparing 6 with 5. Sorry, 5 with 6. Now, if the data at the current index is smaller than its predecessor, then we will compare it with the element before that. So basically, right now we compared it, we felt like the 5 was uh, great, uh, less than 6, so we will, we will check before 6, but there was no element before 6, so we just swap them. Next, we moved on to the next pair. Now, we have 6 and 4. Now we are checking between four, uh, 6 and 4. Now 4 is smaller than 6. So we will obviously switch between them. But let's just check for the element before that even. So before that we have 5. So we check if 4 is less than 5. And yes it is. So what we will do is we will completely shift 4 behind the 5 and 6. So in the next array, it will become 4, 5, 6 and 2 and 3. And as you can see, it has changed. Now, we will shift the bigger elements to an index up to make space for the swapped element. That's what we just did. Now, we will iterate the same steps again to sort the complete array. So basically what we will do, we will check if 2 is less than 6. Yes, it is. Then we will go and check two if 2 is less than 5. Yes, it is. Then we will go check. If 2 is less than 4, then yes, it is. So we will switch 2 to the complete array. Same thing we will do with the 3. We will check if 3 is uh, smaller than 6. Yes, it is. Then we will check if it is smaller than 5. Then with 4. Yes, it is. Then we will check if, if it is smaller than 2. No, it's not. So we will not shift 3 before 2. We will put it after 2. And that's called insertion sort. Now let's try it with a code explanation in a Visual Code Studio code. So let's get back to our Visual Studio code. Here's our insertion sort code. So first we have a function to sort this array. This is called a sort function. Here we have first declared n to this array which, is, which was passed as an argument. Then we have a for loop which runs from i is equals to 1 to i is, i is less than n. Then we have declared a key which stores the ARI. Now we have an integer j is equals to i minus 1. Now what we will do is we will move elements of a array from 0 to i minus 1 that are greater than key. So basically we have declared one key. We will change this key on each iteration of for loop. So basically it is declaring this this key is the one which will be shifting so now we will check every element before that so what, what that is what we are doing using this while loop to check every element before key if it is greater than key now as soon as we figure out yes it is greater than key so we will just uh, swap that position and shift all the elements and then we will put the value at that key's location. Next, we also have a utility function to print this array. So we have a print array function which will print out the complete array. Next, we have our main loop. Here, we are declaring this our array. Uh, it is it is the same uh, 
use case code which we use during a logic explanation then we have a console and the print array line to print out the unsorted array then we declared an object to our insertion sort program this class then we have we used that object to call the function sort then we we use console and the print array to print out the sorted array now let's run it to check if this works and yes it works so we have an unsorted array 65423 and a sorted array 23456 now let's get back to our slides next up we have selection sort in selection sort we have an array which is 42183 now first we will divide this array into two sub arrays an unsorted array and a sorted array then we will find the minimum elements from unsorted array and swap it with the leftmost element of this unsorted array after that we will add it to the sorted array so what we did here is we first di divide the first the array it, array line just focus on the line with array tag and we will divide this array into two parts a unsorted array and a sorted array so the first part uh, which will be the leftmost part will be the sorted part and the rightmost part will be the unsorted part so here our sorted part has nothing and the unsorted part has all the array so basically we are representing the sorted part with the green color and the unsorted part with the blue color so right now we have 42183 in the blue color so basically it means it is unsorted now what we did is we checked the minimum element from this unsorted array so basically 4 2 1 8 3 we find the minimum number between them which was 1 so we basically picked that plugged that out and put it in a sorted part so now in the first uh, tag we have 1 in a sorted uh, portion and we have 2 4 8 3 in the unsorted portion now we will keep repeating this process until there are no elements left on this unsorted array. so basically what we did it di did this is we plugged 2 which was the minimum from the unsorted part and put it in sorted part so now in the second tag we have 1 and 2 in the sorted part and 4 8 3 in the unsorted part now we will keep repeating this process we will keep repeating it like in our third fourth and fifth iteration basically what first we plugged out three the un, next minimum uh, letter and put it in the sorted then we plugged out four, four and put it in the next minimum then we plugged out eight since it was the last element left so here our algorithm stops now let's try this algorithm in a code so let's move on to our visual studio code And here is our selection sort code. Let's start with the sort function. First, we're declaring an array length n in a variable n. Then we will one by one move boundary of this unsorted subarray. So basically, we are having a for loop. Then we were we are declaring a minimum index that that will have value of i. Now i is the iterator for this for loop so it will go from 0 to n minus 1 so basically it will one by one put an element first to the 0 location then for loop iteration works then it will go go uh, look for the first location then the second then the third that's how it will work then we have a for loop which will which will basically check the minimum number so we have integer uh, from j i plus 1 so basically it will look from the current look uh, it will neglect any uh, number before our minimum index so that's why it is starting from i plus 1 so that it will only look for the unsorted part then we have an if element 
it will check if the it is uh, if that array is smaller than our minimum index uh, if it is then it will assign that j as the minimum index next and so now we have found the minimum element so it will be swapped with the first element so now the temp uh, will have the minimum index which was our new uh, j and then the uh, array minimum index will be split with this array i then we have a print array function this will print out this array then we have a main function which will print out first uh, which has first array declared this is the same use case set which we used during our logic explanation then we have a console and print array uh, lines to print out the unsorted array then we have sort function run so that it will sort this array then we have our write line and print array to print out the sorted part let's run this and understand what it did as you can see it has print uh, first printed our unsorted part then it has printed our sorted part so we can be assured that this swapping mechanism works now let's get back to our slide and look at what is our next in the line to understand next up we have quick sort now in case of quick sort let's say we have an array first we have to select a pivot now we can select either the first element the last or the median or any random element as pivots so for our array we have 6 9 5 2 3 now we can choose any element as pivot this pivot will dissect the array in two sub arrays then we will shift all smaller elements from the pivot element to the left and all the bigger to the right so now we have three as a pivot location so now it will shift all the small element to its left so basically the only element smaller than 3 is 2 so it will be on the left and all the bigger element will be shifted to the right so now here it is so it has shifted 2 to the left and 5 6 9 to the right now what we will do we will apply the same operation for the left sub array so basically it has dissected the array into two parts the left sub array and the right sub array so we will do this for the left sub array since there is only one element 2 and there is nothing which is which was smaller bigger than this so it will stop there then we will do this same for the right side so we will go for the 5 6 and 9 now it will find another pivot element let's say it found 6 as the new pivot element so now it will check and every element for the right sub array only uh, which is smaller than 6 so it found 5 was smaller so it shifted 5 to the left and 9 to the right now since it has its own sub array so now it will check for the 5 no 5 has nothing here so 5 will remain there then it will check for the right right there is nothing so now it will conclude that yes it is sorted now let's check out a simple code to understand the quick sort logic let's go back to our visual studio code and here it is our code first we are starting with a swap function this is completely responsible for swapping two elements we are using our same old uh, concept of using temp to swap the elements next we have our function which will do the partition part so basically it will take the last uh, it will take the last element as pivot we can uh, configure it to use according to our wishes if we want to put uh, use the first one or the uh, median or anything else i'm using it as a last element as pivot now we are passing out three uh, variables as its uh, argument so we are passing out the array the low and the high this low and high will basically uh, define so 
which is the array's lowest number and which is the highest uh, index. Now, why it is showing this? Why we can't do it uh, manually during the code part? Is because what if we want to do the partition for our sub arrays, which we will do uh, as you have learned during our logic explanation for the quick sort. That's why it is using low and high. Now we will use pivot equals to array high. Now this is the point where you choose the pivot. Now if you wish to uh, choose the first element, you can use array low, but you have to configure the rest of the code according to that. You want to choose the median, so you can basically choose array high, uh, low high minus low by two. Now uh, let's uh, follow. Now the index for the smaller element and the that and indicate the right position of a pivot found so far. So we will have int i is equals to low minus one. Now why we are choosing low minus one? Uh, it will basically signify that uh, basically what we will do is low will be our one so it will basically choose one before that so that it will start from before next we have for loop int j is equals to low and j through j less than equals to high so it will start from the low to the high minus one then j plus plus now if the current element is smaller than the pivot so it will check this if array will check if the current element is smaller than the pivot then it will increment the index of the smaller element by i plus plus then it will swap these two then after that it will do the swap array i plus one and high then it will return i plus one now we have our quick sort algorithm now this main function will implement quick sort so it will have array which which is the array to be sorted the low which will be the starting index and the high which will be the ending index so now if low is less than high this is a base case uh, situation which which is always checked now if pi is partitioning let's say pi is partitioning index and array p is now at the right place so in pi is equals to partition of array low comma high now it will separate the sorted element before partition and after partition so now we will apply so basically it has partitioned the array in two parts the left sub array and the right sub array now we will use this pi to apply quick sort in the first partition and the quick sort to the next partition now as you have noticed we have used this quick uh, these quick sort uh, calls in a quick sort function. So basically, this is an iterative method. Oh, sorry, recursive method. Next, we will have a print array function. This will print print out the array. Then we have our main function. Here we have first declared our array, then printed out the unsorted array. Before that, we have also uh, stored array length in n to utilize it using for our print array function then we have our quick sort function as you have noticed uh, we are using the uh, zero the which is the low and the high as n minus one which is the array's last index then we have our uh, console write and print array to print out our sorted array, uh, sorted array part now let's try it Now, as you can see, it has printed out a sorted array, then it has printed out a sorted array. Now, let's get back to our slides. And this was all for today's session. Hope you guys found it informative and helpful. If you like this session, then like, share, and subscribe. Now, if this video gets a like of more than 2000, then I will make the same kind of videos again. So, do let us know in the comment section if you want more of these types of videos. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn.
Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.